massive greetings to all you guys out there in the world. I'm Harry and I'm accompanied by Sean. Hello, Sean. Hey, Harry. How are you doing? Looking forward to having a good chat today. Cheers, man. Now, look at this to start off with the wizard Iniesta at work with this beauty. What do you make of this, Sean? Uh, yeah, it's a goal that fans all around the world have seen from him many times in his days in Barcelona. And as you can see, he's still doing it now in the Jamie. Yes, how amazing. Now, more to come later. But let's get this going then. This is J League Monthly kicking off. Hello, hello to all of you. This is J League Monthly and we're proud to be presenting you with the ins and outs of the fantastic uh, J League, the passion, the skills, the goals, the controversy. Uh, but today uh, I'll be asking the expertise of Sean Carroll, who's been covering the J League for a good number of years. Hello, Sean. Hello, Harry. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Yeah, good to see you, man. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing very good, thank you. Obviously, it's an unusual situation now for everybody. A lot more working from home, not able to go to the stadium too much to watch the games. But thankfully, in, on the other hand, that means I can watch a lot of games uh, on the TV or online. So I'm managing to keep even more abreast of things than perhaps usual. Uh, but you've been seeing this league um, uh, for a good number of years. What, what's good about the J League then? Um, I think, you know, one of the things is it's, it's very unpredictable. There's almost every year we have a different team that's champion and almost every round of games. You don't really know from one game to the other which team is going to win, even if there's a, a team that spends more money on players that, that looks like they're stronger on paper. On any day, any team can win. And I think coming from England like we do, where the Premier League, obviously now the richer teams tend to be winning. It's nice to have that unpredictability, I think. Another thing about the J League too is that there's this kind of family atmosphere. I mean, uh, me and you, we come from England, we love the Premiership too. But you know, um, you don't usually get uh, friendly grannies and granddads with their uh, little ones, right? So that's another element of the J League, which is, you know, warm in a sense. Yeah, I think there is that, you know, you get the, the atmosphere in, in English stadiums is certainly maybe a bit more, maybe it seems aggressive. I don't think it is as, as dangerous now as it maybe was a few decades ago, but it's it's much more kind of charged and aggressive in that way. Whereas the J League, as you mentioned, you get whole families there. It's kind of like a, a festival. It's a day out. Everyone can have fun, very safe. Um, and luckily this year, obviously, they've been a lot of trouble around the world with the coronavirus and, and in many countries fans can't go and the J League has done very well in gradually reintroducing fans they've just reintroduced away fans as well so now the fans are, are behaving themselves thankfully they're, they're following the rules and so far everything's been going well and fingers crossed things can keep improving in that way definitely it's just so good to have people back in the stadiums mm. even if not at full capacity right so let's get this going then, Sean. Um, here's a taste of the J-League with J-League power players. Okay, J-League power players. Who do we have first then? Oh, Junior Santos. Let's have a look at this then, Sean. Yeah, this, this is definitely a player you would associate with the word power, wouldn't you? Just yeah, everything about definitely. him emanates power. Mm. Here's another one. Oh from the air look at that yeah he must be a nightmare for for opposition defenders because he's if he's running at you if he's running in behind if he's in the air like you know how do you deal with him you can just see the the threat that he poses here from from all over the pitch god look at this this is a one-man show and then he smacks <sighs> straight into the post and in man what a beast we're well, talking of smacking it look at this one. Oh, boom Oof. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of goal like he, he knew as soon as he made contact with the ball i think he knew it was going in yeah. a bit gerard-esque isn't it yeah absolutely yeah. then we have leandro damiao oh cheeky yeah, this, yeah i was gonna say this is another one who in and around the penalty area just he's always a threat isn't he mm -hmm. oh and yeah this is usami at his best yeah, just a shame he couldn't quite uh, put it away at the end there. But he yeah, made up for it one, here. This one, this one. Oh. oh, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's another one he knew as soon as he made contact, I think. Yeah. And here we go. Oh. This is chip. your favourite. Oh, yes, the man. The silky <laughs> skills. But, mate, the agility and the body balance that he has. 
For but it's not just that. He's, big he's man. very he's very small, but he has the strength too. He can he can keep hold of the ball. So he can shrug off defenders. Yeah. And then he just plays these balls mm. through the eye of a needle. Look yeah. He really is a joy to watch, isn't he? Mm. What beauty. Yeah. Oh. Sapporo, they miss Musashi a bit, don't they? Yeah, I think my Chana Tip's been out injured too, so you know, a couple of big misses there. Oh! Look at that. Yeah, Maeda doesn't miss many, does he? He's very, very dangerous in the final third. Makes chances, scores chances. On the turn too. Here we go. Last year's number one goal scorer with... That's just, that's just art, man. That is art. Then we have Leandro of FC Tokyo. What do you make of him then? I think he's, he has to be one of the most dangerous players on the counter attack in the J League right now. Mm. They've got his pace and he's, he's so clinical in the final third. And again, you can see here from, from set pieces as well, he doesn't, doesn't often miss the target. Right. Oof. Cool. Very cool. Mitch Langerak. Yeah, you had a good chat with him, didn't you? Yes. Not long ago. An incredible Very nice guy. Stop stopper. Look at this. With his yeah. feet. But I mean, the speed at which he reacts. Yeah. We'll see a couple of them. Point blank range. And yeah, another one too. His positioning and I think his awareness of where the danger is going to come from. Look at that. that. That's like, you know, inside a meter, smacked right at him. And then he just yeah. hits it out of danger. Diego Oliveira. Yeah, here's another crack too. Yeah, and there he is again with, with Leandro just pairing up, mm. getting in behind. They've really got some threat up front, FC Tokyo this year mm. with, with those two. And of course, Adalton as well, Nagai, so many players there. Of course. Oof. I, you see, I love this goal because he's left footed, isn't he, Mateus? Yeah, but also he just passes it. He doesn't try mm. to go for the power. He knows the power's already there. Mm. Beautiful finish. He controls. And we have Oshima. Oshima as well, what a player. Yeah. It's a shame he's had so many injuries, but if, he, yeah. if he'd stayed fit, he really could be, be playing for the national team you know, regularly. His, his touch, his awareness, everything. Fantastic player. This finish too, with the outside of his foot. Yeah, just so calm, oh. isn't it? Mm. And the man himself. Yeah, talking of calm on the ball. Yeah. Cool as a cucumber. And you can see passes that other people just can't see. Yeah, that's the thing. Like it's, it's almost as if he sees everything in slow motion. I remember reading an interview with him and he was asked how he makes his decisions. And he says he doesn't really think about it. He just, he knows what to do. When the situation is in front of him, he knows when he needs to turn, when he needs to pass. And, and you oh. see that all the time, right? The, his teammates, it must be a joy playing with him because you just you're always going to get the ball to your feet every time from him. Right. How many times have we seen that with Barcelona, you know? These crafty little touches. Yeah. But it's like he's almost sort of two moves ahead. It's almost like snooker or something where he's looking a few <laughs> a few shots ahead. He knows where everything is going to be in, in three or four seconds. Right. And it right, enables right. him to do stuff like this. Hmm. And the near post. Chill finish. And then we have Leonardo Urao, who is the leading scorer of J2 and the J3. Yeah, he was, right? he was going for three years in a row as top scorer. And he's. He's giving it a good shot this year, but I think we'll come to someone else in a minute who's, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. making it very difficult for him. But this guy, yeah, very, very good finisher. Mm. Oh, and then Evraldo of Kashima. Yeah, another one. Really, there we go. He had a there bit of go. a slow start, but he's found his feet and now, yeah, yes. scoring almost every other game. And that's that's what you need from your strikers. Hanging in the air like Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, Kiyotake. Kiyotaka, yeah, of course, he'll be familiar to a lot of fans in Europe. He had a great spell in, in Germany and in Spain as well. Really, really talented player. Mm. And then a J-League favourite, coming in at 37 years of age, Leandro Dominguez. Yeah, another one, a bit like, you know, with Iniesta, he's another one that, even though he's getting on a bit in age, he still oh, has that, that quality in his feet. Look at that. What a beauty. Good finish too, but with the outside of the boot, Oh, yeah, love it. It's one of those things where even as you get older, the legs might slow down a bit, but you've still got that vision. 
And now we come to the, yep. Malunga. The cherry on the top. The man. Ooh. I mean, yes, he's powerful in all forms. But the finishing too, he's clinical. Yeah. Wherever yeah, he well, is. that's the thing, he's, he's powerful. Oh, he's also very, touch. yeah, he's delicate. What was that? Elegant. What yeah. is this touch? <laughs> man. <laughs> Yes, he cuts in. Yeah, yes, he, he can just it. score all all kinds of goals. It must be so hard to defend against because you you can stop him in the air, but then you'll get him behind, or he doesn't need to get him behind. He just mm. makes himself half a yard and then smashes it in the back of the net. Mm. Yes, fantastic goals and plays that we just saw, Sean um, Olunga. I mean, he is the man right now. We do have a jewel on our hands with his goal scoring, but also his intelligence too. What do you make of Ilunga then? Yeah, as, as you said, it, it's not just the goals. He, he's very intelligent. I, I spoke to him after one game last year and he said that, he said that, you know, as a striker, it's important to be in the right places. So when the chances come, you're on hand to put them away. He said, obviously there'll be games where the chances don't come, the ball doesn't quite fall right, but, but his job is to be there. And when it comes to make sure he puts the goals away, and, as we saw there and as we've seen over the last two seasons, he usually does put the ball away. Mm, totally. Um, and slowly but surely, when we're talking about the J League and the most number of goals scored, we always think about back to 1998, Mr. Gon Nakayama with his 36 goals. Olunga, uh, we're shooting today and he scored 22 already. What do you think? It's not impossible, is it? I mean, the, the rate he puts the goals away every single round of games, when you see that, when I see it comes up that Kashiro have scored, you just assume that it's him. And it's, it's rare that you get a player who's that prolific. Um, and it's getting close. I think for, for Gon, it was almost just over a goal a game. Olunga's pretty much a goal a game at the minute. But as we saw last season, when it comes to the last round of games, he's still got a few goals in his boots. So, we, you know, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So Sean was talking about the last uh, uh, match of last season where he scored how many goals was it? Um, I think he scored eight. Yes, eight goals. No, oh, absolutely. <laughs> eight goals indeed. And um, we've actually got a video with him in the eight goals. Um, uh, it's an official um, video and he scored eight goals. It's, it's not a lie. It's, it's for real. And uh, it's buzzing right now. Maybe we can have a look. Thankfully, we can actually see the eight goals provided by the J-League's YouTube. Um, Sean, eight goals, you can see it once again and again and again. Uh, simply incredible, right? Yeah, it's something that it has to be seen to be believed. And the thing is as well, this was against an opponent who had something to play for. It wasn't like the end of the season and then just winding down. The right. team they were playing Kyoto were, were pushing for the playoffs, but Olunga was just completely unstoppable on that day and I recommend anyone who hasn't seen it and there can't be many who haven't seen it yet but yeah. if they haven't it's definitely worth setting a, a few minutes aside because it's something else totally definitely see it right now cheers right next up we have J Club mascots Sean talking about football we can't forget about the lovely mascots that J League provides huh it's, it's absolutely something that is very, very popular in Japan. Obviously, uh, for us coming from England, mascots are normally something that is, is focused on the kids. The kids love to see them at the stadium. Of course. But in Japan, they, they've got a whole following of their own. Everybody loves the mascots. They're, you know, they're incredibly diverse. You know, in England, it might just yeah. be an animal or something quite simple. But honestly, the, the mascots here, they're, they're something else, aren't they? Exactly. And today, are you going to be introducing us uh, to a certain favourite mascot, maybe? I am indeed. As you said, uh, I just mentioned there, it's, um, there are a lot of very special mascots. And I think there aren't many that are, are more special than this. This is Kizuru. So please, everybody, meet Kizuru. All right, so, oh my God. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Mate, I did not expect that. No, well, as I said, yeah, it's something else, isn't it? They, they put a lot of effort in. Obviously, I think I think many people around the world will be familiar with like, the folding oh. frame, the origami. And the supporters too, look at them. You're joking. Yeah. Wow. Incredibly popular. I think in some cases, you know, the mascots almost rival the clubs for, the, for popularity. They need to be a bit careful. 
and uh-huh. make sure the mascots don't get more popular. Right. Look at it. Look at his stats, man. He's ageless, right? He's yeah, um, a bit like Kazu. Oh, yes, yes, a bit like Kazoo, yeah. <laughs> He's coming in at 26 kilograms for Which somebody. very light. For, for two meters tall, that is very <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> His personality, mate. He, he's, he's very resilient. Yeah, he says he's very resilient, which is very useful, you know. And what else? He says, yeah, good at football, which is, is useful. And his dream, apparently, his dream is he wants to fly, which I think a lot of us can relate to. I totally. <laughs> which, position, uh, which position do you think he's plays? Oh, where would you put him? Um, he's got to be either one end of the pitch or the other. He's either got to be a centre forward, putting the goals away, or he's the centre back, marking the, the other team striker out of the game. Yeah. I think he has to be somewhere important. I think he's a bit of a poacher, man. Right. Yeah, proper kind of uh, Gon Nakayama or Inzaghi style. You know, <laughs> right in front of the goal, mate. Yeah. Right. Yeah, lethal, lethal. Lethal, totally lethal. Man, um, my favourite, or one of my favourites is, um, do you know uh, Blaugon of Akita? He, he's the drunken, right? Um, he, he loves to eat on his asparagus and he just looks like something straight out of Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. You know? <laughs> See, what I love about these J-League mascots is that they have these personalities. I, I mean, it might be the case in England as well, I'm not sure, but my image of English mascots is that they're just kind of, you know, an animal in the shirt. They right. wander around and take pictures. But in Japan, they've got they've got hobbies, they've got personalities, they've got yeah. dreams. And I yeah. think that, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and they never get unemployed as we yes. see with Gunnosaurus being an yes. Austin supporter, slightly tragic. But you know, Japanese mascots, they make they give you the day. So, <laughs> thank you, Sean. Cheers. No worries. Next up, a player, a total legend appreciated by all. They call him the king. Everyone calls him the king. The king is Kazuyoshi Miura, 53 years old, battling in Japan's top league. The man is a total legend. So everyone was excited when Yokohama FC was promoted because it meant that the King was coming back to the J1 League for the first time in 13 years. And last month, he played in a J1 game, the last one being 4,860 days ago, obviously making another incredible record. But let's spin back to the year of 1993 with the skills cultivated in Brazil. King Kazoo was a heartthrob. He lit the J-League on fire with his skills and became the first MVP. After that, he went abroad, came back to Japan, went to several different clubs. In 2017, he scored a goal aged 15 and 14 days. This went straight into the Guinness Book of Records and look at him go, the famous Kazu Dance, the oldest football player to score in the professional league. Still going strong, into his 35th year as a pro, King Kazu still has more to offer. Sean, so he's a legend, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no other word for it. I mean, he's difficult for people from other countries to maybe understand how someone could still be going at that age, but he has this, this aura here. It's, it's kind of like Maradona maybe in Argentina or something. He's, he's more than a footballer. And I mean, I've spoken to, to teammates of his and often, you know, someone who's been in football as long as that, you often expect that sometimes off the record or behind the scenes, people might have little gripes, things to complain about. I've never heard anyone say anything about him. They just say the amount of effort he puts in, the way he trains in order to keep in shape to be able to to still be a professional footballer. Off season, he goes off and, and trains on his own to make sure he's he's in shape enough to be able to keep up with these players who, you know, some of them now are almost forty years younger than him. It's it's really something else.
Incredible, huh? I mean, the whole story of him aged 14, 15, going to Brazil and then getting his first contract, then battling it out in the Brazilian league and then coming back to Japan uh, and then the J League starting in 1993. I mean, if you're talking about Japanese football, you cannot ignore the presence of um, Kazasan, of King Kazu. And uh, on a global sport kind of scale, when you say the king, you probably think about the NBA, LeBron James, and then Michael Jordan. But for Japanese people, I mean, it's got to be King Kazu, right? Yeah, absolutely. As you said, there, he's completely intertwined with, with the whole history, the whole rise of professional football in Japan. In fact, he's got that backstory of going and trying to prove himself in Brazil, which is the home of football you know, around the world. Then to come back, the J-League started. It, it's like a fairy tale. And the fact that he's come from the, you know, when the J-League began and it's still going now as the J-League is growing even more, gaining an international audience, it's really something that, you know, you can't write. And who knows when he's going to stop playing. It's true. When is he going to stop playing? When do you reckon, Sean? I, I don't know. Like, everyone asks him. Obviously, I've asked him. Everyone else asks him. And he just says he hasn't thought about what he wants to do afterwards. I mean, like you said, he... He went to Brazil and challenged himself when he was a very young teenager. His whole life has been playing football. So I think until he, until he physically is unable to, to play football anymore, I think he will want to keep going. And, you know, who's to say that anyone can stop him? Yeah, let's just look forward to the next goal he scores. Could be soon, could be soon. So, Sean, we've been talking about the incredible elements of the J-League, but we have a very big match coming up soon, huh? Yes, we do. It's always every year. It's something that everyone looks forward to. It's the, it's the first cup final of the year. It always seems to be sunny. It always seems to be good weather. It's the Levan Cup final. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's again that everyone's looking forward to, I think. That's right. November the 7th, um, the Levan Cup final. Um, how are you looking forward to it? I think it's going to be a good game. It's obviously it's um, FC Tokyo against Kashiwa Reiso. It's two teams that are, are riding high up at, towards the top of the, the J League. It's two kind of contrasting styles, race so like to keep the ball, like to attack. FC Tokyo is so dangerous on the counter-attack. Um, their manager, Kenta Hasegawa, this will be his eighth time in the final, including his time as a player and as a coach. Um, but he's only won it twice so far. So he's got that open that he's, he's been there a lot, but he's only won it twice. So he'll be wanting to add to that. And then on the flip side, Nelsinio, Kashua Reisol's manager, he's won every title in Japan. Very, very experienced coach. Casual Race will obviously have got the likes of Alunga, who we've touched upon earlier. It should be a great game, I think. Yeah, but everyone's uh, looking forward to this game. Um, I think it's going to be the first cup final since the coronavirus um, has attacked um, the whole world. Um, and good news, uh, people all over the world can actually see it uh, live um, on the J-League's uh, YouTube. Um, so I would like everyone to um, check it out. Um, and not just the Levan Cup too, actually. Um, each round, uh, one game will be broadcasted um, in English and in a couple of other languages, uh, live on the J-League YouTube um, channel. So it'll be fantastic for you guys to join in then. So, um, Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. How was, how was it? It was fantastic. I was going to say thank you very much for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to chat to you about the J-League. We could go on a lot longer, but unfortunately, we always have a director there telling us to wrap things up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always a pleasure. Hopefully, we can do it again sometime soon. Yeah, man. And it'll be just fantastic to be able to see you, hopefully, at the stadium, you know? Yes, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, we're mentioning now the games are going to be shown on YouTube, and it's fantastic now that these days fans all around the world can enjoy the, the games wherever they are at any time. But yeah, there's, there's nothing quite like being at the stadium. So fingers crossed, everybody yeah, yeah. around the world can get back there soon and we can get back to enjoying football. Yes, fingers crossed. I'm Sean, thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. And we'll see um, everyone next month then. Cheers and bye-bye. Thank you very much. See you.